Hello, divine, beautiful souls. This is Katriel here, and I am the creator of Energy Speaks. And through that creation has birthed the Zodiac Energy Empowerment Series. And we are doing this through the year 2024 and hopefully many years to come. If you're watching this now, we're in the middle of our first session for 2024. It is going from winter to spring. In the second half, it will be from summer to fall. What is the Zodiac Energy Empowerment Series? It's a series over 12 weeks where we explore the Zodiac energies in a new way. We won't just be talking about the Zodiac energies, but we will be experiencing them. There are two different tracks, two pathways, if you will, an online pathway and an in-person in Tampa Bay. But those two paths flow harmoniously together. And so if you wish, you may partake in both, either or. You're not committed to the series in full, but it is an added benefit to seeing the vision. If you want transformative change, this series is for you. We will be delving into the 12 archetypal energies connected to the zodiac energies. Chris Witecki developed this specific model that we're about to speak about, which essentially is a discovery. That's something that's written through all of our sacred texts. This is the energy of connecting with our creator and being able to navigate those energies of what we call life and then building something, taking action, birthing something and truly finding embodiment in the process. So if that sounds like something you are interested in, this is the series for you. What's unique about this particular series than all the other self-development um, programs, if you will, is it has esoteric, an esoteric element to it, a mystical element. And for me, that's a necessity. So let's embark on the Zodiac Energy Empowerment Series model. The first step in our model is setting sacred space. Imagine yourself right now in a space where you feel untouchable. We look at the zero. We see three elements right off the bat. We have what's outside the circle. We have the actual line, the boundary, and the sacred space that's within. What we want to do is carve that circle. Look at behind me. We see the planet. That right there shows us that there's a lot going on outside, swirling energy it can often be perceived as chaos. Chaos literally means unorganized energy. But when we actually draw a boundary, we're able to harness 
It's energy. And when we harness our energy, what we're really doing is connecting to the divine. We're connecting to our divine creator and discovering our fullest potential. So it then translate is we were made in the image of the divine creator. And now we get to explore who we are as a soul, as a being, as a being of light and sometimes darkness. You have to honor both, essentially. So as we go through this process, our intention is everything. So right now, as we're having this conversation with each other, I want you to pick one thing, just one thing that you want to transform in your life. I'll give you a few, few moments. Pause this video if needs be. Now, by setting that intention, you have now created the sacred space. You've started forming the circle, but you have to build upon it in order for it to be viable. Now it's time to take a deep breath in. Allow yourself to connect higher to divine source. As you connect, start to explore that connection. Now I want you to move into a state of being able To just be with you and your divine creator. No one else uh, exists. That zero energy. Is the moment. That we take. To connect. Now I'm going to frame this a little bit more. We have 12 weeks of being able to explore the Zodiac energies. Ironically, that seems long, but it's not long enough. That's why we have an entire year. But we're doing this in a completely different order. We're going to, instead of use the seasonal cycle, because there's different cycles within astrology, we're going to use the cycle connected to the numerology and our degree points, our step-by-step cycle. And though we're only going to 12, more so zero to 11, within a transit, there's actually zero to 29. So we're only actually carving out part of a third of the picture here. Now, remember your intention as we've just taken space from that connection point. Now, we're going to put the ingredients inside. This is the fun part. The first ingredient. Let me go back for a moment just so that we are clear on something. This energy that we speak of with the zero is the Scorpio energy. That Scorpio energy is all about transformation, setting the sacred space for our transformation. Now, let's take that circle again, that sacred space. Remember your intention here. Now, Why did you choose your intention? Because you got lit up about it, right? You got lit up. And if you haven't, we need to go deeper. We're still at Scorpio at this point. If you haven't 
discovered why you've gotten lit up. This is a time where you can adjust things, okay? I'm going to use an example. I want an abundant amount of money. I'm just using something that just came through, right? That's often something that we seek, right? <laughs> so does the money itself light you up? Probably not. It's an invitation to go deeper into what lights you up. Because often the intention we speak out is we have to go beneath the surface to be able to pull back the layers and get to the root of what is really going on here in discovering our soul mission and our path moving forward. Now, have you discovered what lights you up? Write down all of the things that have, lit, that have lit you up, okay? Me talking about the Zodiac and Energy Empowerment Series lights me up, okay? I love it. I love to be able to connect with others and share the sacred wisdom that my mentors and teachers and the divine creator has bestowed upon me. That's what lights me up is when I see another get lit up because they discover something within themselves that they did not know before. That's what lights me up. I'm a teacher when every time I'm in class and someone has an aha moment, it lights me up, man. It lights me up. So find what that is for you. Now, breathe into that. Let it light up your heart. That is the Leo energy. We're becoming leaders. We're leading with our heart. It's sparking a level of creativity within us to expand it. Now, we have that first ingredient. We have to discover what lights up, what lights us up to be creative. Now, the second ingredient is our thoughts. Sorry, it's our feelings. It's our emotions. It's our connection with our soul. What truly brings us joy. Yes, I said lights us up for creativity, right? So that creative juice, right, for the Leo is super important. But the feeling, the experiencing the joy, experiencing the feeling at the soul level, tapping into that, experiencing it before we have whatever we set the intention, right? What we're going to do is take that love and joy that we like identified and brought from the heart space, and we're going to intentionally feel it. I want us to deeply breathe into that and see where it takes us. Let your soul be active in this process. Let's take a moment. Take a few deep breaths. You notice something going on here. As we're tapping in and we're doing the breathings, the cancer is all about the rhythm. 
the cycle. It's the ebb and flow. As we develop a rhythm within our feelings, we begin to build a vibration here. We allow that energy to form. Now, what are we going to do with it next? Third ingredient is expand it. How do we do that? Well, it's connected to our belief systems. Go back to the original intention you had. The intention that even if you like slightly had to shift a little bit, Remember when I said, I want an abundant amount of money? Okay. Do you believe it's possible? We have to confront here the possibilities, the thoughts that are coming through in the form of a story. How are we choosing to tell the story? How have we cho- have how have we chosen to do to tell the story? I scratch my head because essentially we often defeat ourselves with our double speak. We say we want something, but on the other hand, we often tell the story that we can't get it. So it's time to start adjusting that. This is the moment in time where you start writing out positive positive affirmations for yourself. And here's the thing. The positive affirmation will only work if you believe it. Now let's go back to the child for a moment. The child... When it wants what it wants, it wants it. It doesn't think through the process of like, how do I get this necessarily from the perspective of like, you know, like there might be a a, a thought of like, I want the popsicle, the popsicle's all the way over there. I need to go walk to get the pops, popsicle. Like very logical, right? But Often, the child is not going to be like, I don't know if I can go get that popsicle, okay? Now, I'm generalizing here. Of course, there's some child that believes that, okay? But more often than not, children, they've come into this world with all the opportunity and potential in the world And the world hasn't taught them yet that they can't do something. They've come into the world believing that they can do anything. That's the energy we want to tap into here. The Sagittarius is all about ancient wisdoms. It's this energy of expansion. So it's time to start retelling the story in a way that's highest and best for you. Now, going back to the circle, we've put that, the heart into it, we've put our soul into it, and now we've aligned our beliefs to it. What goes into the circle now? The sacred space is the ingredient of Aquarius. Taking shift up, getting outside your comfort zone, okay? Doing things you haven't done before, meeting new people, going to new places, taking a new route in the morning. Do you always go to to work? Going the exact same route? Change it up. 
stimulate change. The definition of insanity is doing the exact same thing over and over and over and over again and expecting a different outcome. That is insanity. It is time for us to shift that and elevate our frequency. Aquarius is a very unique individual. A unique individual that also has the collective in mind. The vision. We're tapping into this energy. Let's go back to our original intention. We've now identified the intention, but we've identified the spark within ourselves of what we want to grow and develop a large feeling for, okay? We're expanding our feelings, right? We're creating an actual vibration here. And that belief system is now catered not towards the original intention necessarily, but expanding our creative spark and the direction of our intention. That's important. Write that down. Okay? In the direction of our intention. And now we're going to do something different and stimulate change. As we do that, we're initially at the same time putting an extra ingredient in. That ingredient is Gemini. And Gemini is our thoughts and communications. It is our, our, our ideas. And we're communicating to the universe that we're doing it differently this time. We're connecting to our creator and saying, Hey, put me in a position where I grow. Now, notice we went from a water element with Scorpio, a water element with Cancer, a fire with Leo. Sorry, I did that verse reverse. My apologies. A water with Scorpio, a fire with Leo a water with cancer, a fire with Sagittarius, an air with Aquarius, an air with Gemini, and now we bring in our third air. We're getting that, you know, when you're building a fire, you have that little spark. This is exactly the same way. We're building a fire with our soul's mission here, with our intention, okay? And now we're taking that ruach, which is wind in Hebrew. It's that breath of life. And we're saying, three breaths. Notice that, okay? We're moving into Libra because now in that sacred space, we have put the sixth ingredient, which is Balance, harmonizing, and allowing ourselves to receive. Libra is all about the balance, okay? And it's connecting the heart and the mind together. So I want you to take a moment for y'all self for a moment. Put your hands out in front of you. Cross them, bring them into the heart space. This is what we call a hemi-sync. This hemi-sync is connecting both sides of the brain together, the left and the right hemisphere. Take a moment to breathe in this energy, the synergy. A sense of 
a synthesis, I can't say the word, synthesis of energy, okay? We are harmonizing with the universe now. Libra's all about relationship. It's all about relationship. And like the step before is communication with Gemini. We're taking and building upon that communication and really forming a relationship. We're getting to know ourself with our divine creator, with ourself and those around us to build something. Okay. Now, can you allow yourself to receive the intention that you've set for the session? Can you? Will you? What's the seventh ingredient inside the sacred space? That seventh ingredient is Pisces energy. At some point, we have to let go. We have to let go and allow things to float into the ether. And as we do that, our senses come online. Our senses come online, carried over from, you know, Libra energy, which is definitely, definitely connected to our senses. We're taking it to another level, though. Okay, we're getting a little bit esoteric here. And we're allowing ourselves to go into the unknown, our spirits to go into the unknown. Because we've talked about our heart, we talked about our soul, our belief systems. And we've done a lot of work in between that, moving the energy and harmonizing it. And now it's really time to flow it. To let go, allow the divine source to navigate the waters. And as we do that, we step into the unknown. And it is important for us to find understanding. Yes, I said understanding. And find compassion for ourself, for others, and the process itself. This is the time where we may have doubt and we need to have faith. Things are not just one moment. It's a series of moments. It's a series of days and weeks, depending on what, what your intention is. I want to talk about something here that's very important because we used a abundant amount of, 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 of cash. Okay. Of money, money is energy. Okay. So no matter what your intention is, I'm, I'm just going to frame it in this way. Okay. When you're creating something, there's a threshold. If you said, I want $500,000, you have to essentially give it a little bit of a boundary, okay? so that you can match its energy. Otherwise, the universe doesn't necessarily know how to match it in the way of time. So what we can do here, this is, we're starting to get into the next, next ingredient, which is Capricorn. And it's more practical. This is the time to decide, commit, and build. 
So I challenge you at this moment in time, if you had a very fluid statement, adjust it slightly here, okay? So I'm going to adjust my, my statement here with, I am calling in, I want, or you can even say it in a different way. I partake in, I have $500,000 or more. This is where we can add the or more, okay? We had to get excited about the direction we were going in, you know, with whatever the intention it is. Um, but now we have to start grounding it in practically, so we have to give it a framework. I just chose a number, okay? I could have put any number there, okay? But now we're starting to build a frame, kind of like a building, right? Or structure. And then we allow that flow to start building, that potential to start building. Capricorn is all about building things. And so that structure is important. And we're taking a building block. This is also the time that if you were calling in something, right, with the intention, you may actually see, um, you know, like say if you're wanting a house, you're, you may have like, three houses presented to you and it's coming down to the choice of what aligns with your intention. This is a very, very important part guys right here, right now, because let's just say it is the house scenario. You're going to want to walk into that house. And you remember when we were in cancer, right? Cancer energy, which was, the second ingredient, but the third step, okay, we had to feel it. That is when we take in that feeling. We bring it into this structure and we say, does it match what I felt? Does it match? And if it doesn't, that should be a clear indicator. Your intuition say, not for me. Because if we start to say, I want this, yes, I want this, yes, I want this, there's no space to be able to build anything, okay? If it has to do with the exact same thing and it's not built, it's like separate pieces, okay, that don't really build on each other. This is the point where we say, yes, this resonates, no, this doesn't resonate. Yes, this resonates. Now, I want to take that bottom layer of the first, re you know, resonated thing and the second and build something together. That's Capricorn. Building blocks. Then we take that last ingredient, that ninth ingredient, which is Aries, and we take inspired action. Now the creative energy has built up so much that we have no choice in the matter. Well, we've made a choice. <laughs> but we have so much potential flowing through us that it's inspiring us to take a direction. Like, it, it, it just... It is, you know? And so we go towards that path. We we go down that, that road and we see where it takes us. And Aries is 1,000% connected to the child, okay? It is the spring of nature, literally. We want to tap into that 
force of nature from the heart space because we started this entire this entire thing off with the heart. So when it aligns with the heart, we know we're going in the right direction. And now the the tenth step here. 11th step, whatever, you know, it's the 11th Zodiac here is Taurus. And I want to show you something. So we're using Scorpio as that zero step. Okay. And we have Taurus at that 10. Now, if you see, God bless you. I have a little buddy over here. <laughs> we have that zero. We've just Put all the nine ingredients inside and what pops out? One. Because the blade of grass has come through. We're now seeing the manifestation. That's important. Take knowledge of it. Celebrate. Allow yourself to take it in. Because this is another receiving energy. This is the receiving energy from the physical. Okay. Libra, we received it at an inner, in an inner way, okay, in, in regards to harmonization. Taurus, we've now received it in the physical way, which is divine. And then we have our last, last ingredient here. Last step more so, because we had the 10, went to here, and now we have one and one. So the 11 energy. Now, why don't I show you this? We started off with like the one energy being Leo, okay? That one energy looks at each other and sees its reflection. The divine creator, you know, created us we were made in the image of that creator we're seeing this within our process so when we have this manifestation we're now not necessarily looking at just the manifestation we're looking at who we've become in this process and as we've learned what we've went through and everything it took to get to the space we're now looking in the mirror to be able to, one, create what, the same energy we've done again, and then also embody it so that we can grow even more. Now we're going to a whole nother se section of things. You remember how I said this is only one third of the model? That's true, because then we get into a second level. But we're only going to be speaking about these 12 energies because they're the basics, the basic principles here. When we have these 12 basic principles in this order, we can change and shift the name of the game, guys. Okay? So, Zodiac Energy Empowerment Series is about this model. And what are we what we are doing is week by week in this order, going through the zodiac energies. The class each week in person in the Tampa Bay area and one online. There are 26 different practitioners for this series. Two of the classes have two practitioners, which is why we don't have 24. <laughs> that is not including myself. Me and another practitioner will always be partnered up because it shows how important it is for balance and partnership. How we can hold space for each other. How we can collaborate. Collaboration is a huge thing here. And then we'll start to build momentum with each other. Not only are we co-creating with universe for ourselves. We start to think outside the box. The box doesn't really exist. That's what we want to do here. We want to we want to not even recognize that there is a box. 
and we want to go for our unlimited potential and we want to create in harmony with each other. Build a movement of us all working together in this world. When we, stay, when we stick to these basic principles that are created by our divine creator, the natural order of things, and we start to tap, in and t- tap into those energies, we change, we shift, we birth a renaissance. We come into harmony with each other. And where the world is right now, we need this. We need this in our lives. I wholeheartedly believe in this series. Plus, it's really fun to be able to pick a activity, learn to embody the energy, and take it with us. Because we're not just one Zodiac. We're all of them. And when we start to realize that, yeah, of course, we're going to have Scorpio in us. If we're sun, you know, Scorpio sun, you know, and if our earth sign, people don't talk a lot about that, you know, is in Taurus, you know, yeah, we're going to have that. But here's the thing. Yes, we have them all in different amounts. But when we can start seeing that we have unlimited potential to take that kaleidoscope and shift it any which way we want, because we're actually tapping into the divine energies of the creator. We truly begin to find shalom, peace harmony with each other so i hope this was all helpful for you guys and explaining what the series is i have created a journal for this process and it will be updated every year or if not sooner as this is the first first prototype I will say it is a very, very good journal. And I'm not just saying that. I mean, I really put a lot of work into this. And technically, I've been working on that particular journal since 2019. And it wasn't until inspiration really kicked in to be able to to take it to where it is today. But it is a nice way to reflect on everything that's moving in this series because At first, you will say, whoa, that is a long time to be able to talk about Zodiac energies. But then when you come in, you're like, this is not enough time to talk about all the things we need to talk about. Because what we're really talking about is the energies of the divine creator and the archetypal energies, which is all about setting sacred space, connecting to our creativity connecting to rhythm and cycle and our soul. Belief systems. Stepping outside our comfort zone and stimulating change. Communication, relationship. Navigating the waters of the unknown. Building our foundation, making decisions and commitments for that process, taking inspired action, receiving our manifestation, birthing our manifestation, the birthing process, what that feels like, looks like, and stepping into our becoming, embracing our truest potential through embodiment. That is the essence here. I know I sound intense, I get that, but I'm passionate about this and I want to share it with you all because we can do something big here. I love you all, divine, beautiful souls. That is enough for this session. I love you. I will see you later.